let's consider a more practical usage of the special sensitivity analysis. One of the most common ways the sensitivity analysis is used is to determine the optimal test intervals for meeting a given reliability goal. To that end, I'm going to use this cooling system example that we've been working on previously and optimize the test intervals for the secondary cooling leg. I've created a generic parameter for the cooling test interval and applied it to all of the basic events in the secondary cooling leg. They're all tied to this generic test parameter, which is set at 0 0.08333 years, or that's 1 12th, so 1 12th of the year. In other words, a test interval of one month. I'm going to use the sensitivity analysis to determine how often I should test these components to achieve a target on availability. Before we run the sensitivity analysis, we need to make sure the system results are up to date. To that end, I can just click the Perform Analysis button first. Once the results are up to date, I can go to the Analysis menu and then select the Special Sensitivity Analysis option. In the Special Sensitivity Analysis, there's a number of options that I need to set to determine how the sensitivity analysis will be performed. The first thing I need to set is the scope of the analysis. This is what determines what objects will be included in the analysis. The first one is the target object. Target objects could be a fault tree gate, an event tree consequence, or a risk category. For now, I'll stick with a fault tree gate. The list here will show all gates for which retain results as checked. Any gate that meets that criteria can have a sensitivity analysis performed upon it. You can hold the control or shift keys while clicking on gates to select multiple items. In this example, I'll just perform my sensitivity analysis on the cooling top gate. In the bottom half of this dialog, we want to choose which input objects will be included in the sensitivity analysis. Input objects include the basic events in the fault tree, the generic failure models which are tied to those basic events, or generic parameters which are tied to the local failure models of those basic events. We can include all three of those, but in this particular example, I only want to modify the generic parameters, so I'll exclude the events in the generic failure models. We can also further filter the input objects by groups. If I only want to perform my special sensitivity analysis on a particular subset of the basic events, I can include those basic events in an event group and then filter on that event group. So for example, I could only include my pumps or only include my valves in my sensitivity analysis. Similarly, for generic data, I could filter by generic data group. Once I've determined the scope of the special sensitivity analysis, I want to choose the parameters that will be modified and the system results parameter that I want to save the results for. Starting at the bottom here is the sensitivity parameter. What basic event input parameter do I want to modify so that I can see its changes upon the system? For my purposes here, I'm going to use the test interval parameter. I'm going to modify the test interval of the basic events and see its effect on the system parameter of my choosing. In this case, I will go with the default unavailability for my system parameter. Other choices for sensitivity parameter, in addition to test interval, include things such as time at risk, failure frequency, mean time to failure, standby failure rate for the standby model, and characteristic lifetime for the Weibull model, among many others. Other results parameters for the gate include frequency, conditional failure intensity, unavailability per flight hour, and risk reduction factor. Changing test intervals to see the impact on unavailability is often done in process safety, but another industry, say aerospace, might change exposure times to view the impact on unavailability per flight hour. Now that I've set my parameters, I want to choose the factors by which I want to modify my input parameter. Reliability Workbench allows you to specify up to 20 different factors, and they will be spaced by powers of 10 by default. In this particular example, I will set eight factors. And instead of spacing by powers of 10, I'll directly enter what I want. So my factors will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, 18, and 24. Now, since I was very specific about my generic test parameters interval, I set it to one month. 
the factors will be multiples of months for the test interval. In other words, what I'm telling Reliability Workbench to do is run the analysis using a test interval of one month, of two months, of three months, of four months, etc. And in this way, I'll get a picture of what would my system unavailability be with different test intervals. To view the results, we go to the results tab. Before we can see them, we actually need to perform the analysis. And I'll do that by clicking the perform calculation button. Since I only have one included object in this analysis, it ran very, very quickly. If you have lots of basic events or lots of included input objects, then the analysis might take a little bit longer to perform. Let me resize this dialog so we can view the results a little bit better. Okay, so I only performed the analysis on the generic test interval. So what Reliability Workbench did is it multiplied the test interval by the different factors. And remember, when that test interval is changed, all the basic events that are drawing from that test interval are also changed. So essentially, I'm changing the test interval of all of the components of all of the basic events in the secondary cooling system we're changing them all at once to see the impact upon the system unavailability. So with a test interval of one month, the system unavailability is 1.255 times 10 to the negative 3. That was our baseline. That's what we started with. If we tested every two months, the system unavailability would change to 2.011 e negative 3. Testing every three months results in an unavailability of 2.726 e negative 3 and so forth. If I was trying to target a specific unavailability, maybe I have a goal of a system unavailability of 5 times 10 to the negative 3, then I can see that I would need to test at least every 6 months, because the next option I have every year exceeds that unavailability target. When I'm done with the sensitivity analysis, I can save the results to a CSV file, or I can remember that uh, target that I wanted and click the Close button. Let me go now and change that generic test interval and set it to test interval of every six months or 0.5 years. Select OK, and I can rerun the analysis. And now I've run the fault tree analysis with the necessary input parameter to meet my goal.